Hello and welcome back. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana, and you are watching Marksman TV. Welcome back to another weekly used gun review. Remember, in these videos, we take in a sampling of used guns that come into our store, give you guys a two to three minute overview of each one to give you guys an idea of some different things that are out on the market that you might be interested in, some things to keep an eye out for. Remember, this video is meant to strictly be educational. The purpose of this video is not to sell anything, as that is against YouTube's policies. Anyway, with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and and jump into it now. Alright, getting into this video, remember the format is we start off with the most common and move through the least common as we move through the video. Anyway, starting off with the number one spot, this is a Taurus 738 TCP. This is a 380 pocket gun with one magazine and the magazine holds six rounds and the original box of course looks like this. Of course, this is a double action only hammer fired. It's got an internal hammer in the back, so a little bit of a heavy trigger pull, no manual safety or anything like that. Now the TCP would have come out onto the market in about the 2009, 2010 timeframe. Remember around that time you had the kel P3AT, you had the Ruger LCP uh, coming onto the scene. So the little micro 380s, uh, the bodyguard from Smith & Wesson, which I actually had one of those on one of these videos about two or three videos ago. Same sort of concept, the polymer frame, micro concealed carry 380 pocket gun has really been popular, uh, popular eye, uh, popularized, excuse me, in about the past 10 to 12 years. And of course, now there's many other options on the market. Now, brand new, you could typically find these. Uh, they ran sales and promotions, but you could typically find these new for about the 199 maybe anywhere between about two and 250 used you should be able to find them but you know for around 150 to 200 dollars respectively about 150 dollars is where they equalize if it's got a mag in its box and in relatively good condition so if you find one of these used you know for 150 dollars a great deep concealment for summertime carry uh, if you're going someplace you're just wearing gym shorts you want to have something with you maybe you can't pack your um, officer size 1911 with you that day this is a great sort of a backup or an ancillary carry to quickly run out and do something where you might not have you know again your full size firearm with you so a really good option there now because of its size and weight it is going to be a little bit of a snappy uh feeling when you shoot it so not the most comfortable but remember these were not designed to be range guns uh they're definitely there to be used when you need them to be uh for self-defense purposes it's always good to take something like this to the range and put maybe a box of ammo through it to make sure it runs okay and you're familiar with the recoil impulse when you have to use it otherwise people you know maybe take them out every once in a while just to re-familiarize themselves uh, with it but again for 150 to 200 fifty dollars a really good option and worth taking a look at all right up next is another pretty popular one this is the ruger lc9s and this is going to fit into the uh single stack subcompact nine millimeter category that has been the main sort of the realm of concealed carry uh you know since about 2010 to lately up to about 2018 and 19 which is now sort of being replaced with things like the 365 and the um, hellcat and things like that now, to start off with the Ruger, the standard LC9 was a hammer fired pistol that had a really long, heavy trigger that not a lot of people really liked. They do have the trigger safety here. You could get them with or without the manual safety. And typically brand new, you would find those around the $350 mark, which for the price point, again, keep in mind when these were uh, most popular, they were competing with things like the XDS and the Shield. So like the first gen Shield, the price point was right in line with this. The, X, the first gen XDS uh, was a little bit higher than this. So these were actually, about the time that we opened our store six to seven years ago, these were actually really popular sellers and we qu carried them quite often. Now, because the LC9 uh, did have that heavy double action trigger, they did come out with the LC9S, and this was about five or so years ago, and that was to move it to a striker-fired system with a much better, much improved trigger. It was actually pretty interesting because one of the most common used firearms that would come into the store was the standard model LC9, as people were getting the LC9Ss and trading in their uh, first generation LC9s, the hammer fired guns. So those you could actually find used, like, I mean, we were selling them out of here used for like $150. Even with that heavy trigger on it, uh, was a really good option considering they sold new for about $350 to $390, you know, respectively when they first came out. 
Now the LC9S is with that really slim profile, really nice recoil impulse, much improved trigger, trigger safety. Again, you could get the manual safety if you wanted it. These are really good sellers. We would buy into these in the Ruger deal, or stocking dealer programs. I remember we would get you know 20 or 30 of these in stock and get a really good discount on them. We had them at a point where we were selling them for like 289 on sale, and uh, you know people would just line up to buy these things. Really, really good pistols. Now these would be uh, in about the past year and a half to two years ago, these were replaced by the EC9S, uh, E standing for economy, which is basically a watered down version of this with a more like black, black oxide finish, less uh, machine work on the slide serrations, so wider slide serrations. The sides actually milled into the slide. And now they've actually discontinued this and they're only offering the EC9S because those you get brand new for like again 250 to 300 so about it was about a hundred dollars off of msrp from this model when that came out you know people of course being more of a point and shoot option i'm sorry for the noise in the background again there's uh people out in the shop but um you know uh, people really realize you didn't really need the adjustable sides and the finish is fine being a black oxide to save a 100 bucks why not so they would discontinue this and uh, take up the line with the EC9S, which is what you can get now. These on the used market right now under current conditions are bringing in about 250 or so. Normally, I would say they would be around more than the $200 mark under, under normal uh, circumstances. But anyway, this one here has a holster, a mag pouch, two magazines, basically everything but its box in relatively good condition. So uh, anyway, I'm not seeing too many of these used anymore, and they uh, people tend to kind of hold on to them. They are good handguns and worth taking a look at. All right, up next I have a Savage Edge in 223. Now this would come out in about 2010, and about a year later it would get the name changed to the Savage Axis, which you all know. It is essentially the exact same rifle other than the name change. So this is a first or second year production Axis, if you will, being a Savage Edge. There is really no design change that ever took place between these. Um, very basic economy, entry level bolt action rifle. They are a really nice action actually for the money and I knew you are gonna get these around the $350 price point used. You're gonna get them between about 250 and 300 respectively. Now this on it has an AccuShot uh, optic. It is illuminated. Uh, things like this actually not wholly that expensive and you typically find optic packages with the Savage Axis, things like the Remington 738, the Ruger American, the Mossberg. Um, I mean, they have the Night Train on the Patriot package. So they had, uh, usually you find you can find a setup with things like optics like this and the optics typically alone are somewhere between 100 to 150 dollars this is a utg mount and everything utg products are usually tack on uh, products very inexpensive tack on products that companies like to put out as a package deal but if you're looking for something to get like a kid into shooting or it's going to be your first rifle and you want to learn the fundamentals of uh, long range shooting uh, you want to get into like a varmint or a hunting rifle and you don't want to spend a lot of money and you don't want to get something that's going to get you know something that you know is going to get beat up and you want to be able to take out and abuse it a little bit without worrying about damaging a nice walnut stock or something like that something like the savage axis or an entry level bolt gun they are totally fine i mean the bolt action is a very old and antiquated concept and has really been uh, reinforced and redeveloped over and over and over again by many different companies. So, uh, you know, the Mauser action being the most um, sort of recognized and prolific of those, but you can't go wrong with something like this. This has a removable box magazine. Now, uh, one thing that the Axis actually does have is an improvement over its other entry level competitors is it does have a metal ma uh, body magazine. I have had Ruger Americans actually in here which sell for about the same price point, about $350, that have a plastic magazine. Uh, this does have a plastic latch, but actually feels a lot better to me than the Ruger one. But I actually had, uh, back I, I ordered I, something like 20 or 30 Ruger Americans. You can actually see my old videos that are on a rack on the wall behind me, like from videos like from two or three years ago. And I actually had two of those, the magazine latches on them broke uh, just from being handled by people in the store. So, you know, consider how that would work if you're out on a hunting trip or something like that. So these magazines actually for the price point are really good mags. Um, Savage makes really good products. There's really nothing wrong with them. There's always buyers for stuff like this. And if you are thinking about getting into a varmint gun, 
Of course, you can get these in 308 and higher caliber. So if you want to get a deer rifle, again, you don't want to break the bank. You can't go wrong with something like this. Again, find a nice condition, used one for about two to three hundred dollars. Put your own optic on it. You're good to go. So uh, glad to see this type of stuff come in. I actually don't get in accesses or accesses, whatever you want to call them, Americans. Uh, these types of bolt guns that often they tend to stay in people's collections because you know they are just a good thing to have around of course resale on them isn't going to be that high so people can't really justify selling it to a gun store or something for 200 bucks when they could have a really nice usable deer gun you know left over for a friend uh to use you know if somebody's in from out of town they want to go hunting with you so definitely worth taking a look at all right so up next i have one that's actually a favorite of mine this is a smith and wesson m p 1522. so if you are a user of an ar-15 you uh, use them for varmint hunting a uh, three-gun competition just out for fun on the range defense of life and liberty whatever reason you have for having an ar-15 uh and you you want to go out you want to practice you want to get down the fundamentals of magazine changes moving from on and off safe uh, sight picture uh, running gun whatever you're doing but you don't want to burn up all your 556 or 223 ammunition especially in times like these where the ammo is hard to come by this is a great training implement so basically this is a 22 lr in a complete and total as you can see ar-15 configuration now the great thing about this product compared to other things that are like it, like the Mossberg 715, is those sort of mimic an AR-15, even the charging handle is just a molded piece of polymer and you actually side charge it. This is actually to scale and size and placement of controls and everything just like your AR-15. So all of your training does translate over uh, to your AR-15 platform. Now the one big difference here is this is all polymer upper and lower. And unless you are running like an Omni hybrid, uh, what you have is like 70-75 T6 aircraft grade aluminum. So the weight is going to be a little bit different. The feel is going to be a little bit different. But the controls, the manual of arms, magazine release, uh, loading functions, clearing jams, all of that is going to translate over to, to your actual 5.56, 300 blackout, whatever you have. Um, these are not very expensive. You can get into these under normal circumstances, brand new, between about $450 and $500. Used, again, under normal circumstances, between about three and 400 Now, right now, I'm seeing these used upwards of over $500, mainly because of the times we're in. But under normal circumstances, you should be able to find a nice condition, used one for, you know, $350, $400, somewhere in that range. Magazines are not that expensive. They are a 25-round capacity. If you are in a banned state, they do make the, I believe they make a five, but I know they make 10 round magazines um your sides are the same everything is a standard uh picatinny rail 1913 rail up here at the top so this has emphasis magpul folding front and rear sights uh, m-lock furniture the front handguard on this is polymer again going to be a little bit lighter and feel a little um you know you're going to feel the polymer more than you are in your full size ar-15 but again you're also spending a lot less money Alternatively, if you want to do 22 LR training on an AR platform, you can always buy an upper kit, which CMMG actually has. Um, and those are gonna run you about 200, 250. There are uh, other replacement upper kits, but I actually like the idea of having a complete different firearm uh, without having to convert your parts over. Just, you know, something else. If you have a buddy or, or somebody who wants to take the gun out on the range and practice with, you have that option. So again, a really, really nice package. And the 22 scaled down 22 LR versions of the 5.56, this, in my opinion, is really the best one on the market, and it's not that much more expensive than the alternative. So I definitely think it's worth just putting in the money. And again, if you are on a budget, you should be able to get a used one of these in good condition like this for not a whole lot under normal circumstances. Again, right now things are weird, but wait it out and, and find one at your gun store. When things sort of calm down, you won't regret it. Okay, up next I have a Uberti Single Action Army clone. Now this one particularly was imported by Stoker. There are many different importers on these. Uh, most popular ones, Cimarron, Taylor, and of course Stoger. But Cimarron and Taylor bring in the most of these. Now, Uberti is an Italian company that makes a really good reproduction Colt single action army all the way down to all the similar functions. So you guys have seen like the Ruger Vaqueros that I have had uh, on these videos in the past couple weeks and their design changes that they made on those, such as there is no second click position. Um, you are able to actuate the uh, load, loading and unloading operations with the, with the hammer in the down position, which is not how a original single action army functions. Beyond that, the Vaqueros have a transfer bar as opposed to a hammer right here, mounted 
mounted, or I'm sorry, a firing pin mounted right here to the hammer, just like a single action army would have originally been. So the um, short of having like a safety notch on the base pin, and I believe there is a little bit, uh, there was some sort of safety feature on the firing pin as well. Beyond those two features, it really is identical to a single action army, the original design. That's what makes these really popular with the SAS, the Single Action Shooting Society, SASS, Cowboy Action Shooting Competitions, where a lot of people, yes, will use second and third gen Colt single action armies, but most people are using things like this, which are the Uberti clones or the copies of the single action army. Now, typically you're gonna find these in about the 550 range. Uh, new use, you're gonna find them at about the 350 to 400 hour price point. Uh, if you are able to find one used in really good condition like this, they are definitely worth picking up, even if you are not into the SASS shooting. Uh, definitely something that's different and fun to take out on to the shooting range to just have fun with. You can get them in the traditional 45 Colt. You can get them in 357, uh, 38 Special, uh, 4440. They make them in a multitude of different calibers, whether you want to be the authentic cowboy loads or something a little bit more modern, like a 357 that's easier to find and cheaper to shoot. You can go that range as well. Of course, similar to the Colt Single Action Army, you do have four clicks on the hammer. Um, single action, just like the name would suggest. The trigger pull on these is very, very nice and smooth. This one has a color case hardened finish, wood grips, and a blued uh, cylinder and barrel. You can get them in like the nickel slash stainless. You can get them uh, different trigger tune configurations. And the different importers like Cimarron and Taylor and Stoger will actually have different model names for them but they will essentially be the same products across the different import lines uh, if you just know what you're looking for. I believe like the Taylor Smoke Wagon is the same as the Cimarron Evil Roy, for example, if I have that right. So those are like the tuned with the nice checkered uh, grips. You can get them in the Bisley configuration. So these are really excellent. Actually, in my store, I carry a full line of Cimarron imported Uberti revolvers in all different finish finishes, the barrel lengths, which are the traditional four and three quarter, five and a half and seven and a half. Um, so just a really, really just fun to get into. I really enjoy these. And uh, if you ever see one sitting around, I definitely uh, recommend taking a look at it. Again, used for like $400, you can't go wrong. Definitely a, a lot of fun to play around with. Okay, up next, I have a Savage Model 10. These are actually phenomenal rifles, but they're really strong and really good action. Now, the Model 110 would be the long action, so the higher Magnum uh, caliber cartridges, and then the 10 would be the short action, basically anything up to a 308. So this one is a 308. You can get the Model 10s in a 223. Uh, now, the 110 variation uh, design concept came about in about the late 50s, early 60s. I believe it was, uh, design it was designed in the late 50s, and patented or in the, in the early 60s. So it's actually as a uh, design concept has been around for a very long time. Big rivals to this would be like um, the Winchester model, I'm sorry, the, the Winchester, the Remington model 700 or like the Winchester model 70 would probably be its two biggest competitors in this arena. Really, really nice action, really, really big following on this. Now top on this is a Nikon scope with ballistic drop compensator. For those of you who don't know, Nikon actually stopped producing optics about a year or two ago. So the value on these is actually creeping up. New, this scope would be about $250. Um, you know, again, optics on a gun, you're, you're not gonna get a whole lot back on the value. People typically uh, budget out for the rifle and put their own glass on it, but uh, a nice Nikon like this, which is harder to get, might add, you know, something around 100 to $150 in value to the firearm. The firearms themselves, the rifle, uh, brand new. They go anywhere. They, now they come in different configurations, uh, heavy barrel, thin contour barrel, synthetic stocks, wood stocks, and you're going to find them new between about five and seven hundred dollars again in line with like a Remington 700. Now they do have chassis versions of this like the Savage Ashbury Precision as well as the Savage Stealth and the Stealth is going to start off at about 900 to a thousand. The Ashbury, Ashbury Precision, uh, Ashbury Precision, I'll leave that in there. Uh, that'll get up to about the thirteen hundred dollar price point. You know you will find sales on them getting them a little bit cheaper but really the model 10 is a great action if you get a long range chassis system on there with a good optic they are a very viable uh, firearm for precision shooting for hunting really anything you want to do with them very versatile uh, i really really am a fan of these products i am a little bit more into the 700 series uh, from remington but really there are i mean it's, it's sort of like the chevy four debate between the savage 10 and the remington 700 so uh, pick your camp but they are both great and they are i mean un undoubtedly the model 10 and the 110 are 
are great actions and a, a really, really good uh, firearm for precision shooting. If you see one of these in your, you, in your uh, gun store on the U shelf, uh, or even new, consider picking one up. Now this one here does have, of course, a detachable box magazine, similar to the magazine on the edge or the axis uh, that you saw before. So similar uh, or same magazine concept there. When you get into a Remington 700, you either do the ADL or the BDL if you want the, um, if you want the fixed floor plate or the uh, the hinged floor plate where they do make the Remington 700 chassis with the removable magazine. But this one comes standard with the removable mag. So a really nice feature there. Definitely recommend it. If you see one, take a look. All right, up next I have a Remington Speedmaster 522. Now these would be introduced onto the market in 1957 and they are still made today uh, and called the 522 BDL Deluxe. Those retail brand new right now, MSRP is about 700. You probably find them new about 600. The used pricing on these varies pretty widely. You have the standard model BDL, or I'm sorry, the standard model 522 Speedmasters, um, maybe in good to fair condition. Those typically sell about the $300 used. Now this particular one was made in 1972 per the barrel date code. Um, it was, uh, I have it written down, September of 1972 is what this one dates to. And this is actually the deluxe version with the high gloss finish American walnut stock, the checkering, uh, very nice grip swell here, a very, very nice feeling rifle. Now, the one thing that makes this very iconic, and the quickest way you know you're looking at a Speedmaster is the cocking handle is actually forward of the receiver, sort of inletted into the forward hand grip here on the left hand side, which gives a nice overall smooth appearance here. It is a tube fed, so semi-automatic firearm, really nice high polished blue. And all of these were chambered in 22 long, short and long rifle. So there was no varying different chambering on these. Like we saw last week on the Winchester Model 61, you could get them in a short, long and long rifle and then a short only. These were all in the short, long and long rifle. So really nice, you know, having hit the market in the 1950s, there are a lot of people who have nice nostalgic memories of squirrel hunting or shooting tin cans or things like this. So they do have, uh, they definitely have their place on the, in the market. There's always people coming in looking for things like this. And I don't see too many Speedmasters actually. In the six or so years I have been in business, this is maybe the second or third Speedmaster we've had. So they are not too common. Um, again, although they don't bring in a huge amount of money and I don't think I got to the price point on this, but I would expect, you know, in 1970s, excellent condition deluxe like this to sell between about five and six hundred dollars or so in the used market um, but you know a good a, a you know again a really good uh, plinking 22 lots of nostalgic value there and if you see one definitely worth taking a look at but you're definitely going to be uh, fighting those guys at the gun store counter that remember uh, t taking these out to shoot you know tin cans and squirrels when they were kids so really really cool rifles very unique uh, definitely enjoy seeing these things come in okay last but not least I I have a Colt Trooper Mark III and a nickel finish and four inch barrel. So the Trooper would come along as a response to the need or the want for a lighter weight medium frame revolver to be used by police departments. So in about the uh, mid 1950s, Colt would come out with the Trooper model to address that need and really marketed this uh, firearm or the original Trooper firearm, excuse me, to the police market. Now, the original Trooper would last between about 19, I think they came out with it in 53, it was in full production by 55, and then would be replaced by the Trooper Mark III in 1969. So by 1969, essentially labor costs were going up, they needed to revamp and come out with a more economically uh, feasibly produced firearm that they could bring out into the market to kind of spice things up and get new uh, interest in the Colt products. So that was, uh, this is one of the products that Colt came out with in order to do that was the Trooper Mark III. Uh, they would basically, uh, like I said, reconfigure the design. There's actually no part interchangeability between this and the original Trooper. They would do things like add a transfer bar instead of the original Trooper would have a, um, a firing pin mounted right up here on the face of the hammer. Now these would also be offered in nickel and blued finish. Uh, four inch, six inch, I believe as well, or they definitely had a six inch. I believe that was the two. Um, I'll roll in the, actually the barrel length configurations. I'll roll in here at the bottom to give you guys an idea of what those came in at. Now these are not original grips on this. This is a uh, set of target grips that were added by the previous owner. The nickel plating on this is original. It's got a little bit of frosting on it, but overall very, very nice condition. The action on these is very, very smooth. Even though they were intended to be, the troopers were intended to be a more affordable option, 
um, other than like the King Cobras and the Pythons. Uh, they are still a very nice and smooth and refined firearm and a lot of collectors really do enjoy them. On the used market, uh, you typically see the Mark III's going anywhere between about $500 and $1,000 depending on condition, depending on finish, and depending on whether or not it has its box. You can see them get up over $1,000, maybe up to $1,500 if you're looking at like a long barreled nickel finish, excellent condition in its original box. Something like that would top off at about the $1,500, but mostly you're seeing them between about $500 and $1,000. So, uh, Anyway, I'm happy to get one of these in to show you guys, and that takes our number eight spot for this video. Well, that is all the time I have for you today on these. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out this video. If you enjoyed, please let me know by hitting that like button, and please also consider subscribing to my channel if you want to see more content like this. Also, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those down below. Anyway, guys, I'm going to sign off. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV. I'll see you next time.